into it. Good glorious morning. Good glorious morning. Welcome to Coming with Coffee episode on this Friday. Hi, Instagram. How are you doing? I'm just going live in Instagram and Facebook. And I'm actually going to place this into my YouTube channel. It's a new thing I'm about to all get gloriously into as well. Good glorious morning. Happy Friday. Welcome to Coming with Coffee. Today's episode or this chat that I'm coming in about today, I um is all around. Hi on Instagram, it's Melissa Louise, your absolute pleasure advocate, erotic blueprint coach, sex, intimacy, and relationship expert. And this morning I'm talking, I'm really going to come in and speak about how Ravish got uh, created, which is on April the 8th. This is a one day immersion. It's live. You can actually go if you're in the UK, it's more um, attuned to the UK time frame. Uh, because it's at my dear friend um, Aisha's place. We are streaming. You can join on Zoom and you can do that from, if you don't mind getting up early in the US or in Europe or if you're in England and you want to make the journey, you can actually go um, and be with a group of women at Aisha's um, retreat centre. And that's all in the link. The link to Ravish is in my bio. But what I am spe- what I want to speak to you today is how it how it came about, how I created Ravish, why, and also to to speak about this incredible, I think it's incredible, and I think we need to really look at this. This says a lot about our culture uh, and the way that, um, you know, women are required to show up in relationship as well as men. I'm speaking to the feminine side. I'm not, as you know, I'm a absolute advocate for men as well um most of my client base is actually men which is really interesting it actually goes in waves it goes in waves throughout the year so I've got all women and a few men then all men and a few women it's uh cyclic it's it's on a cycle no so this I realized too on Instagram there we go that um is a bit better no matter yeah um so this the what do we call it results of surveys uh I always lose this word anyway Um, where single women live longer than married women and married men live longer than single men. So (laughs) when we look at this, you know, the the woman in a relationship where she's, especially if in in a marriage where there's children and household with the amount, the massive work that women do, women do so much work. We're in constant on, we're constantly on. And also too, as we come out of decades, come out of centuries of way that we're relating, we're finding new ways to relate that really works for both sides. Up until now, it's been, um, you know, where women are having to be of service. So this fact of being of service, waiting, and this is also too what I find really interesting is when we're looking at divorce rates up around the 50% for a long time now, this part that I know in circles of women, and this is getting back to how Ravish was created, where so many women are waiting to be chosen, where we are raised to believe that our success is related to whether we're in a relationship or not. So we're waiting to be chosen. Then we get chosen. We go, you know, the feminine goes into relationship. Then we're a fucking service. And we have to give up our life generally to be in this relationship. And that kills us because we're not in. Most women are underfucked, completely underfucked, so underfucked. Women, I speak to so many women in marriages and relationships, and there's not three hour sex dates every week. There's not this where their bodies are being completely ravished and they're, you know, open to, you know, all to the spiritual universe in their orgasmic states. That is not happening. And so when that is not happening, we are slowly dying. And statistics show this. Oh, I just realized I'm really dark. Maybe that's my screen. Really dark on, um, (laughs) sorry, on uh, Facebook. So women in relationship slowly die and they die before single women do. Their age is not, they don't live as long. We can die. I can go in and dissect that for hours. So I want to speak about Ravish, which is on the 8th of um, 8th of April for all of you women. Uh, if you're in the US, yes, it's going to, I'm getting it, it starts at 6am for me, 
because I want to I want to be able to give I always get emails and people saying that when they're in England when they're in Europe the time frames that I do at night don't work so we're like shifting it up so if you're an early riser if you're in South America it's it's great it's going to be around a 9 a.m for you so Ravish was designed to really allow women to experience shifting through this so it's like a wet blanket. That's what I feel when I meet, when I get in and get to speak to groups of women that are in these spaces of trying to date, feeling like their life is like they're in this constant sort of loop of like trying to date, wanting to get, trying to find the one. I am not dissing that. I am not saying here to stop. Um, <laughs> you're so is it, yeah you're so excited for rabbit awesome 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 um I'm not here saying do not do not start like you know stop dating do, you know just give it up like be single I also want to change this thing about successfully and obviously with these the data that's the word I was looking for with the data coming in that women who are single live longer than women that are married or you know in couple coupled um we are successfully single and when we embody the, this energy, I have some of these words, because they get used so often, they make me cringe. But when we embody the states, when we embody the state of our happiness, the fact that we are okay to die alone, our whole energetic system shifts. We live from a different place. We exist from a foundation that is really strong and it's uh, grounded in our own sovereignty. And that's what Ravish is all about. It's not about you have to stay single. It's not about, you know, doing a big like whatever fingering up to, finger, finger up to or fuck off to, you know, to dating and men. It's not about that at all. Ravish is designed to somatically move through this sludge to me because it also too we live in a, a culture that is obsessed by positivity that we've only got to be positive be positive be positive there's four major emotions our our whole human experience is based on four emotions one of them is happiness one of them is happiness the other three is anger grief and fear these are the three out of the four primary emotions of the human experience. So I have a somatic practice that I take my clients through that we move through those. We move through those and come through pleasure. And in Tantra, there's this beautiful saying that's on the other side of pain is pleasure. And they always talk about that in Tantra of the internal world of a woman's, uh, a woman's, but I, don't, I can't say the word on bloody Instagram and probably because this is going to go on YouTube as well I can't say anyway V-A-G-I-N-A the internal world of a woman's um sensual and sex organs uh holds epigenetically it holds all of her grandmother's great-grandmother's mother I can say all it holds energetically you know the grief the pain the fear of her lineage and I'm not saying, and this is not to be looked at. It's like, oh my God, Jesus Christ. You know, what it is, is this is this is what sex is designed for. Sex is designed for the feminine to feel more. It's designed for the female body to unleash the beautiful, the most incredible work and gift that a man is to a woman in this in the coming together in a sexual encounter is to hold the space of witness to hold the space for her body to unfold because she's got all of this work to do to release on the other side of pain is pleasure and so when I'm talking of pain even numbness most women's internal organ of her her, her v-a-g-i-n-a is numb in today's, and I say, I say for centuries now, God, I've been reading so many, I've been reading so much stuff of what happened in the 1800s. Oh, hey, sweetheart, my dog's just opened the door, which means my neighbors are all going to be open to all of this, um, uh, of where a woman's sexuality has been like versus the state, where it's been owned, it's been deemed a subject, a topic to criminalize women for. And yet this is at the this is the center, the corner stone. I was going to say the corner is at the foundation of a woman's health. Same for a man. 
his sexual energy is in the foundation. It is the absolute cornerstone in the foundation of his health and his wealth. That's why constant ejaculation is so fucking depleting and it weakens men. It weakens men. I'm um, about to release my, my men's course for this year. Occupy Your Cock is about to be released again. We're going to be starting in May. Stay tuned for that, men. Um, coming back to women. So Ravish was designed to move women through, we're going to like, it starts off with, you know, move, you're doing these somatic, uh, this somatic practice that I take my clients through. We're moving through the layers of those emotions. On the other side is pain is pain is pleasure. We come through into that. No, we're not self-pleasuring in front of everyone. If that's what you, if you're like freaking out about that, there's all of these ways. Pleasure is how we live life. Okay. Pleasure is how we live life. Um, then there's going to be a, a whole experience of where we meet ourselves. We're going to be doing some mirror work, which is really profound, really profound. Um, ah, I'm not, I don't want to give too much away because then it's like, but it's like go in and read, go into rubbish and read. Um, there's also going to be a part during the day where we're going to have, I'm going to have a discussion about, uh, you know, the difference between the masculine and feminine. Because even though this is around you really embodying yourself and understanding how you can be your own best lover and be in love with where you're at and move through and have be sovereign in your own pleasure. There's a part of that is understanding men, understanding the way that men communicate the, and the difference the way that we communicate because there's often this, this is also what's happening is we're completely missing each other. You know, when I first worked with Alison Armstrong nine years ago now, I've always been saying eight, eight, nine years ago, if I, changed everything in my world changed everything in my world this is even how I communicate with my father my son it changed my relationship with my son it's changed my relationship with all of my male friends of how I am able to operate operate I feel like I'm on a when I operate on a big big machinery with all of the levers like <laughs> pulling up at me. but um but how I get to understand when men are communicating, whereas before it's always this misfiring, as, especially as women, the way that we're raised, we need to be chosen. We need to we need to box ourselves in this container to make sure we're palatable for men so that we get chosen. Fucking bullshit. Whilst we're doing that, we're, we're also not allowing the masculine to really receive us. We're not giving the gift to the masculine of who we truly are. So Ravish is this whole day that takes us through all of these processes. Then we have this beautiful class of understanding men, which is just so freaking profound. When I did a did the live um, in Aisha's group, like I, I think there was three pointers or two things that I gave, which just like straight away, the women are like, what? The, our brains work differently. Our brains work differently. And when we understand this, we get to come together and co-create in all of our situations, yeah? Alison, uh, Alison Armstrong has this great saying where she says, um, uh, women treat men like mis hairy, misbehaving women. Women are always in on their brains around like, oh my God, what's going wrong? What's happening? Deciphering comments, deciphering this, like thinking there's something wrong. Um, we go through that and then we come into polarity integration. This is the accelerated evolution processing that is so profound in my work. It is so profound in my work. So women, get your sweet asses into Ravish. It is going, yes, you can join online or if you're in the UK and you want to make the trip, you can actually get together with a group of women in Aisha's um uh I don't know who you are so I'm not going to be inviting you in on live and we haven't had a conversation this is like you know I I don't receive requests uh for people to come on unless we've had a previous conversation and I've invited you on and there's something we're going to be talking about um so no you won't be coming on um and I don't know who, who you are so um what was I going to say? This is a whole boundaries and consent thing. <laughs> it's like, ah! and I've seen that some people have commented on Instagram. I'm going to come down and um, I will uh, check your messages in a moment, your comments. Please make comments too. And if, if any women, if you want any more, if you have any questions about Ravish, please feel free to ask me, like direct message me or go into the link into my bio and check it out um, and get your tickets. It's just a one day event. It is not going to be... Um, 
recorded whatsoever. It's not it's not a recording to send out. This is an in-person, even though you can join on Zoom as well, but this is an in-person event and we're keeping it in that container. It's not a recorded event uh, at all. So it's like, be there. And that's the magic, is the absolute magic of women together, getting together, getting together. And it's also the magic of knowing it's not being recorded because it's also going to be really profound. It's going to be a very profound dive into our inner world yeah and when we speak about our inner masculine when we're looking at polarity in relationship it's also the polarity in relationship with self so the polarity of our inner masculine inner feminine all of those catch terms but it's the it's the we can look at polarity and du duality we're in duality with ourselves when we are always looking out to have the masculine energy be to lean into that if we're not also cultivating it within ourselves. That's the same for men. It's exactly the same for men for their inner feminine, inner feminine for the um, the balance of their feminine energy, which is emotive. Feminine, if we want to keep it really simple, feminine energy is emotion. It's emotive. It's more. So when we think of the masculine just being really stoic, we think of him being, you know, really like just not in his emotion, not letting anything affect him. He's so out of balance within himself. And then it's up to being in relationship for the feminine to bring that in. So this is where we can get back to these statistics, to the data. There's those two words, the statistics and the data, where may, uh, women in relationship that are married uh, die earlier than single women is because the women are being in generally, we're coming out of a lot of old patterns, but generally where the feminine, where the woman is responsible for that, the feminine part in the man as well, making sure he's, you know, eating healthy, making sure he's going to the doctor, making sure he's looking after himself. And then she's doing that for the kids as well. And there's no time for her. It's the classic. There's no time for her. And what does that do? And this is the ravish is not just for single women. Ravish is for every woman to come in, whether you're single or whether you're partnered to come in because women in relationship need to be claiming and you're not asking, you're claiming. Same for men. Men need to carve out more time alone in relationship. Women need to carve out the time to take care of themselves. Your pleasure is not indicative of another. You are completely responsible for your own health, your own wealth, your own well-being, and your own pleasure in or out of a relationship. Inside of a relationship, you are completely responsible for your orgasmic state and your pleasure. It is not up for someone else to give to you. They co-facilitate, co-create. They're a part of the rising of getting into, yes, there's things that you, when you're in partnership on how to hold the space, you support, you know what your partner loves, you help get them there. But it is not, you are not responsible for your partner's orgasmic state. You're responsible for playing in that realm and how you play in that realm is so fucking wide. Most people are in this freaking corner. Uh, everyone's stuck in this tiny little corner around sex. I'm like, it is done this way. It is P and V. It is, it's, oh my God, sex is how we satiate our desires. So this is another part of the single woman syndrome, if I could call that, um, where the, the constant um, shutdown or contraction of, needing to have a partner to have a great sex life and half the time it's not it's not great at all it's even more than half the time it's like without the co-creation without boundaries without consent without the conversation without you know what is I mean my thing is too I mean people ask me why don't I, I I'm not dating that much at the moment my criteria criteria for me to go out on a date for me to be able to go there it's I need to know it's like what sort of personal work have they been doing what are they bringing to the table? I have no problem going having dinner and having conversations, but it's not going to go into any, it's not going to go further if they, if if the person that I want to engage with in has done no study into sexuality, they don't know how to master their ejaculation. They're not, and I'm not saying they have to have it masked, but are they working on it? Is it something, because why would I open my body to that? And that's my thing for you women as well. Why would you open your body? Why would you go to the possibility? What questions are you asking? Most people go into the bedroom, they go on a date, 
you know, have a few wines where they're into the bedroom without even asking about what the other one, what are their pleasure practices? What do they need? You know, how long can they last? Like, how does their body open? Like, if you're a man on a date, you need to ask all of this stuff before you even go into the bedroom. And when people say going, oh, that's a bit strange. It's like, really? When you go on a, if you go to an interview for a job, they're not just going to hire you because, oh, look, you look good. They're going to hire you because they need to know what skills, what are you bringing? What can you bring to their company? Can you support their company? The person you're having a meal with or a drink with, can they support you in having a really great time? You don't know that unless you have a fucking conversation of like, okay, let's see how we can play together. And it doesn't mean it's like you may then get enough information, go, awesome. I'm really, oh my God, you're great at massages. Awesome. Let's do that. Let's play in that. Da, da, da. You've got great humor. Let's play in that. Yeah. Too many people are allowing themselves to get naked and going in and allowing someone to come in without a fucking conversation about it. It's, fuck, it's just fucking ridiculous. So it's just, it's just fucking ridiculous. It's, it's mind boggling how people would get naked with one another without fucking talking about it. And yet no job interview happens that way, nothing else. You don't go and get, like, you don't buy a car unless you know how to drive it. I mean, some people do, and what happens, they fucking crash and all of this drama. You know, it's like, it's why insurance companies don't, you know, don't insure younger people, they don't insure older, you know, the amount of insurance you have to pay, I should say, all of this stuff. Because it's like, okay, what do you, what's the criteria that you're coming in on? It's the same thing with relating. I'm not making it cold and, um, you know, devoid of excitement. It's fucking exciting. Ask any lover of mine that's gone through this. And like, they I get told all the time, it's like the most incredible experience that they've ever had. And people will come out of marriages. And I've done, I've been on dates with men that have come out of marriage going, I've Holy fuck, my wife and I never even spoke about it. Like, we're, it's like, so what the fuck were you doing? You know, just the expert, the assumptions. And we are raised to be an assumption. I'm not sort of like, you know, this is a whole thing. We're raised to be an assumption. And this is also with creating ravish for women is the assumption that we are raised in that we need to contort ourselves and we need to be on such high vigilance on how we look <laughs> how we look there's nothing wrong with getting all dressed up and feeling great there's nothing wrong with that holy bejeebus like no there's nothing wrong with that but it's where is it coming from the fact that then it's a failure if you're not doing that so all of this is held in the nervous system and that's what rubbish is about it's the somatic practices and process we're taking you through to loosen to move through that and come back into where your inner your inner polarity has your back. Yeah, and this is also to the, the absolute essence of polarity integration and, um, and these beautiful tantric process I'll take you through around safety and belonging in your body. So go to my uh, the link in my bio to have a look at at Ravish, it's on the 8th of April, Saturday, the 8th of April. Uh, you can join live if you're in the UK. And um, like actually you can go down to you know Aisha's place and go down I'm just putting on my glasses to have a look at these um, things or you can get online as well and men um, yes yeah, sex is how we say it is sex is how we say <laughs> going out okay adventure dating the adventure dating is um, what is adventure dating in I just wrote it up yesterday. I've got three programs going at the moment. There's a co-creation with Dr. Seven Crow for we're doing a whole group program. That's in June. I've got a men's program coming up in May. Um, I think adventure dating is in that one. <laughs> I have to remember. I'm always, I'm so creating all the time. Um, okay. Sex is how we say our, our, our desires. Yes. And so here's, here's an idea. Take, a, take a, someone on a date just for food where the food is like, make sure all of the food involved is so exquisite. And that is, and how you eat the food, the, what comes next? How does the, how does the setting look? All of that stuff. Yeah. That is sex. It is how you satiate desires. It's not this P and V, P and A thing. Here come all of the dogs and my neighbors. <laughs> Bella, who's opened the door. <laughs> all right. I'm jumping off only because I have tons of work to ah. <laughs> Thanks, darling. Yes, do watch the replay. Hello on the replay. 
Oh, it's an amazing workshop. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Bill. Yeah. Have you gone and looked at it? I'm so excited. I am. I am Jade Sophie. Oh, awesome. You're joining us. So women go in. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Go in and check out Ravage, the link in my bio. Men, the men's program is coming out next week. Uh, getting all the landing page and all of that sorted. And um, yeah, if you have any, any um, uh, questions, sorry, I just went back into the data. I have a bit of a squirrel brain today. Um, I went out and laid on the beach yesterday and that's not because of why, but I took the afternoon off the girlfriend. And I went, I love being on the beaches during the, the middle of the week because no one's there. It's so gorgeous. An empty beach is my happy place. An empty beach is my happy place. Um, what was I going to say? So for men, where the data is opposite. If you've just joined, I started this whole live about how single women live longer than married women, but married men live longer than single men because the married man has this woman that's always looking after him doing it. She is taking care of the feminine energy, the emotive energy. Yeah. And also too, the, the truth is men that are married also do better. They live longer because they also do better financially as well, like a married couple. They, so the issue that we have in a relationship like that, which yes, you know, and my salsa teacher, my Cuban salsa teacher, we had the hugest discussion about this the other day. This is very deeply set in, you know, the culture of Cuba, which is why I love Havana and why I love my family there. You, For those that know me personally and who have worked with me, sometimes this story comes through, but I had a beautiful partner. Oh, it's, it's just been his birthday, but he passed away. He didn't pass away. He was murdered, actually. Um. The beautiful thing is I got to spend 10 days with him. It was murdered the day after I left on that trip. Um, <laughs> so we've all just gone through his birthday. Um, that would have been. So um, the, the culture here is like where a man to be truly happy is, you know, behind every good man has to be a good woman. And they talk about this in the culture. And we were talking about this the other day um, with my salsa teacher where it's like, a man, the depth of a man's happiness can never flourish to its full potential unless he has a really good, he has his woman with him. She's not behind him, under him, like with him and how that is a success of business, it's a success of family. What we have though is in, yes, but the other side of that is where it's expected for the women culturally and society for centuries now where the woman needs to be of absolute service. There isn't the space for her. And that's why women in relationship die earlier because they have been of service and handed in and the birth. And because we're in isolated, this is also because we're not living in community anymore. So women are still birthing, but they're doing it on their own and they're raising their children in isolation which is, you know, one per two people in a in a relationship is isolation, raising children, you know, um, and working and looking after the man and looking after the family to develop. Whereas single women, because they don't have that, they're not constantly taking care of someone else and they have more space for themselves while they're living longer. But single men don't live as long as married men. And if we, and it's getting more dire, they're dying earlier and earlier and they're dying early and earlier. And I would be very bold and very fucking comfortable and confident in saying that this, the pornography addiction where men are just consistently ejaculating all the time, like two, three times a day, one time a day, and they're just looking at the screen, you're fucking killing yourself. You're fucking depleting yourself. You're becoming weak. Yeah. You're weakening your brain, you're weakening your mind, you're weakening your whole resolve, but you're just depleting yourself because you're throwing your freaking liquid gold down the fucking drain into the bin. It is not designed for that. It's not designed to be consistently out. You know, yesterday's post, I wrote a post yesterday for men around, you know, because powerful men, men that make more money have higher sex drives and it's this money sex thing. But then there's this cap because what we have in our culture where they take, you know, they can grab the secretary, they have the affairs because we don't teach in, we don't teach men and women 
the, the, the absolute superpower of our sexual energy, which is for men is to raise it up to your, up your spine into your brain. And that, you know, that is how you create more business and how you get more powerful. So our, when we look at our current culture's power, it's actually capped and it's really sick. The power that gets pushed towards us is, is actually really sick, which is what we have. You know, and there's no respect for Mother Earth, which is like, you know, raping her and taking all of these things out of her. And, you know, we wear it like all, oh my God, just another trajectory to go down. Um, but the sex and sex, money and power is this really exquisite and it's power. It's like the power of our heart, the power of what we can create. But it's really sick in our current culture existence because we don't learn the actual power of the sexual energy that comes up our brain and comes, you know, up our spine, sorry, up into our brain and create. So it's actually quite capped in our current culture. So <laughs> that is a lot, isn't it? Ooh. So I did end up speaking to men, which is awesome. Please stay tuned. If you want to, if you are a man here and you want to know about the course as things that comes out, DM me and I'll just make sure you get the link straight away. We start in May for that. Um, and for women, get into ravish. It's gonna be such a fucking, it's gonna be so much fun. It's gonna be deep, it's gonna be fun, but you're also gonna be held. You're gonna be held in a container of women and you're not gonna be recorded. There are no, there, it's not gonna be recorded and it's not gonna be sent out. So that's also the exquisiteness of that where um, whatever you share there is gonna be contained in there because there's no recording going out. And you can join live if you're in England, go, um, go to and you'll see in the in the link where you can go I actually don't because I'm not I'm not up on <laughs> the country of England anymore I don't know where I can't remember the name of the town that um Aisha lives in but you can reach out and find out about that if you want to join or join online so lovers is there are there any more comments is it oh my goodness look at I know I was down there does anyone else have anything to say oh thank you I will have a wonderful I actually have a really yummy juicy weekend lined up so I hope everyone else has a juicy, yummy weekend as well. If anyone has any questions about Ravish, just DM me or you can ask here. Um, and in the Facebook group, just, you know, put a little message down underneath. And um, yeah, join me. Join me and Aisha. Join me and Aisha. Join Aisha and I uh, for Ravish. And um, if you go to Aisha's place, you'll be fed food as well. Oh my goodness me. Yum, yum, yum. That's your adventure date for this weekend. If you're taking someone that take yourself on a date or take friends, get friends together and have an orgasmic eating date. Dating is not just about looking for someone to have sex. Dating is around experiences. This is how we satiate our desires. Like, oh my goodness, getting, I am so fulfilled when I get together with my girlfriends. I organized a couple of weeks ago, a love day. It was a Sunday afternoon and I did up my whole apartment. I went and got all of these flowers. I put flowers all up the steps from, from my gate down the bottom, all up the steps with flower people. Oh my God, we're coming to a wedding. It's like, no, it's like you're being received. And the whole place was full of flowers and everyone brought their most favorite food. And we all sat on the floor and we all talked about our food and we all just, it was so delicious. And to me, that was so much more satisfying than going out on half of the dates. People don't think about it. You know, on Bumble, you know, how the woman has to reach out and it's like my thing, I come in, okay, choose between this. And I have all of these like, you know, and guys just don't, half the time don't even know how to handle it. They just like, oh, I'll choose that. And there's nothing else coming forth. And then you hear about all of these people complaining that, you know, there's no good woman out there. It's like, you're not engaging. We've, we have come to a place in the way that we operate is that we, we operate from a place of not engaging. We don't, when I say we, I'm talking about the population at large of where there's just such a immensity of non-engagement. We don't engage in life from a place of being alive, of co-creation, of creating for the sake of creating. It's always this thing at the end, well, is this going to lead to that? Am I going to get something out of it? Who knows? We never know. All right, lovers, women, come and join us on Ravish. Men, stay tuned for the men's program. It's coming out next week. That starts in May. Women, Ravish is on the 8th of April. And come and play.
come and dive deep into your inner world and play, be held and nurtured. Probably there'll be a, quite a few tears, there'll be a lot of laughter. We do it all. We do it all. Okay. <laughs> Have the most amazing day. Have fun. <laughs> ciao, ciao.